We did an investigation in Romania. Anything creepy that's automatically associated with Halloween is basically right there in that location. This was earlier on in, in the seasons that I worked for Destination Truth, and and I was sort of new. Josh Gates had assigned us tasks, and one of my tasks was to uh, help set up base camp and help string out the infrared cameras, the IR cameras. We happened to set up our main base camp right next to a cemetery. Some of these cameras are extended, you know, hundreds of yards away from base camp. Mm -hmm. So we're armed with a flashlight and a walkie-talkie. Just like any typical horror movie, I leave the group like an idiot. There's probably not the smartest. You probably should have the buddy system going on. Right. And things like that, especially unknown areas and werewolves running around. I happen to look up and I see a full moon. So I'm like, <laughs> oh, perfect. Wow. This is, this <laughs> is getting great. better. Better and better as we go. As I'm setting up the last camera in the cemetery, I hear a rustling in the woods behind me. And I'm, I'm hooking the batteries in the IR camera, and all of a sudden I hear what sounds like something stepping on branches. I hear branches, twigs breaking behind me in, in the woods. Because I'm, I'm still in the cemetery, but there's like the wood edge right there. Mm -hmm. The edge of the woods is right there. You know, I'm in the clearing, and there's something in hidden in the woods behind me. And pitch black except for the light from the moon. Wow. And so I'm like, okay, maybe it's just, you know, a deer or something, you know. And my heart starts pumping as fast as it can go. And I immediately think, this is a giant werewolf right behind me. He's going to rip my head off. And so I'm continuing on getting it hooked up, and uh, I hear it getting closer. So now my heart's really racing. I'm trying to decide whether I should grab the radio and call for help. I start to grab my radio, my walkie-talkie, to call into base camp to tell them what's going on. My hand's shaking. I go on a talk and tell them that I hear something behind me, and I just froze. I could not move at all. But then I thought, if I do that, I'm going to have the volume all the way up, and, and I'm, I'm going to be like, hey, guys, can you help me out here? And I'm try to be quiet, not to trigger whatever is behind me to attack. And all I'm going to get is, yeah, Rex, what's going on? This is Josh. You know? <laughs> They're like, they're super loud, and then the thing's going to like rip my throat out and attack me. I just switch the radio off. And as I'm doing that, I hear footsteps behind me. So all these thoughts are rushing in my head. My life's flashing before my eyes. Um, I'm imagining this thing ripping me apart. That's it, definitely a werewolf that's behind me. And uh, and at this point, it's so close that I actually, actually hear panting. I hear what sounds like breathing behind me, heavy breathing, like panting. And it's actually moving in the opposite direction. Because I froze, I make a sound. I was there for what seemed like an hour, but it was only a few minutes in reality. Whatever it was kind of made its way off. It left me alone. I'm sure it smelled me and then left me alone. So uh, by that time, I just kind of, okay, I'm out of here. And that's all I cared about is it went somewhere else away from me and it left me alone. And I lived to tell about it. Wow. I didn't get bit, so. I think at that point, I don't know if I'd, I'd pee my pants or run or what to do. I, I literally, I Scott, I thought, when I said my life was running, flashing before, before my eyes, I not only that, but every werewolf movie I'd watched was flashing <laughs> in, in front of my eyes. So it, 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 was, it was pretty terrifying. Wow. It was.